In this update, we're going to be tracking our next storm system. If we expand the view this morning, that storm that impacted the Northeast will be safely moving out by later on this afternoon. Back behind it, we've got much drier conditions that will be moving in. And after a chillier start, we do have south winds starting to return. We'll start to elevate those temperatures into the afternoon hours but all lives will be trending out west you can see this beginning stages kind of a subtle hint of a cooler pocket aloft that will be the beginning stages of an upper level low that will form into our main storm system in the week ahead but back behind that very amplified pattern from last week we had a cold front that moved through and that usually clears the atmosphere out and now we're kind of resetting the atmosphere and it's going to be nice for a couple of days for monday and tuesday time frame as good part of the country is experiencing a lot of drier air moving in on the backside. so you should see a lot of sun for a good part of the country but by the time we head into Wednesday, that's where the upper level low will start to beginning to show signs of strengthening and deepening. And as it does, right around the Four Corners regions, you've got to be to the right of that. We have already know we have a south wind starting to kick in. That will actually start to pull some of this water vapor in from the Gulf of Mexico. And where that low pressure is going to be out west to the right of there, that's where you're gonna have the, the main lift. So we should start to kind of overturn the atmosphere with some heavier rains back here into West Texas, into the Texas Panhandle. And as the low starts to deepen, it's gonna to start to see a changeover into the form of snow as we get into Wednesday night, Thursday timeframe. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel. And I appreciate each and every one of you because this channel's reached 215,000 subscribers. So I appreciate each and every one of you that follows all my daily breakdowns. And if you're in the market for a weather station, I highly recommend the Tempest from Weatherflow. It's actually the one I personally have had for the last three years. And the cool thing about it is it's a complete five-in-one system. It only really takes about 10 minutes to install. They have a convenient app. My whole family has it on their phone. Plus they have a desktop version. You can be a part of the 65,000 now in the Tempest community. If you'd like to purchase one of these, I do actually have a discount code, which is Pal Weather 10, which provides 10% off and free shipping. So here is the link, and plus I'll have it in the description below to possibly order one for yourself before the holidays, because it's two weeks until Christmas. So here's the setup going into Wednesday. This is Wednesday, December the 13th timeframe into the afternoon. That's where we're going to have some of the water vapor start to creep in from the Gulf. Should start to overturn this atmosphere as the vorticity starts to amplify and starts to deepen across this region. We're going to be starting to see some, some rain starting to move in, some beneficial rains. It's been really dry out here into West Texas, heading into the Texas Panhandle. But you can see some of the snow trying to make the transition back here towards the Rockies. And I think as we get deeper into winter, Wednesday, heading into Thursday, we're going to be looking further north. So notice all the colder air, really, really cold air starting to build into Alaska. But notice this really warm pocket of air that's building in the northern tier of Canada. And underneath that, that's the low pressure. This will actually help amplify this low pressure and actually help it deepen and actually get a little bit colder with this with that uh, water vapor that's going to be feeding into that low pressure center and as it does that will elevate the rains as we head into the overnight time frame on your wednesday so we start to see a transition from light to moderate to likely heavier rains moving in into west texas into the texas panhandle back here towards new mexico but notice the transition where it starts to get colder some of that could chart to change over into the form of freezing rain and some sleet and then once you get up towards the rockies all that will be transferring over to snow 
And yes, that will move back into areas like into Denver, back into the Colorado Springs region. And that will actually shift further south into Santa Fe. But there's the verticity. It's going to continue to deepen. And I think by Thursday, it is really strong by then. But the thing about this system, it really doesn't go very far, very fast. So the longer it sits, the more rains it's gonna be able to lift and the more snow it's gonna be able to lay down across this region over a small corridor where exactly where that low pressure will lie. And underneath that, if you are underneath that with this very slow moving system, you're gonna have some heavier rains out here in South Texas, as well as into West Texas, but you should start to see a changeover to light even some moderate snow at times into the Texas Panhandle, Western, Western portions of Oklahoma, as well as western portions of kansas and then back into those ski resorts into new mexico angel fire should get a lot of snow from this system you can see the temperatures though right even in the afternoon so there's going to be a sharp gradient you're going to have kind of a drier slot that comes in on the back side but if you're underneath where that low pressure is those are going to be dragging down some of that evaporative cooling air will help keep those temperatures right at near freezing and even into the afternoon hours. But notice where if you're not under the low pressure, you're gonna be well, well into the almost upper 50s, if not upwards to 60 degrees there into you know central Texas and eastern Texas with all the action out to your west. And as it does, I think it finally starts to move on Friday. So it should start to form on Wednesday, all day thursday and then start winding down from the texas panhandle and it'll start shifting out east and by then it'll be likely going to impact portions of the oklahoma city region i'm not expecting any snow for them or anything like that but i am expecting kind of a chillier rain further south into the dallas Fort Worth area into austin into san antonio this will likely shift over into the houston area as we get deeper into the day on Friday. But there's the low pressure. This is gonna be a slow moving system. It'll start as a kind of a rain snow mix and all snow into the Texas panhandle, but this will be moving across into Texas with kind of a chillier rain, likely in the 50s and raining all kind of all day long with this un underneath that uh, low pressure center as notice further north right you got more of a kind of a zonal flow setting up that's kind of a drier flow underneath so this is going to be your main storm system in the week ahead and we'll be tracking this because these upper level lows are fairly tricky especially with the slow moving nature and and with this uh, system as it's going to be moving through wednesday thursday and a Friday time frame, but where it does start to get even more interesting, by the time we head into late Saturday, especially heading into Sunday time frame, looks like it's going to be diving southeastward, and that will actually put it back into the Gulf of Mexico. But notice the ridge over the top. We're going to have a lot of warm air moving back in for a good part of the country. So we still start to see above average temperatures moving back in as this low pressure center will be underneath into the Gulf. And if we look at some of the ensembles, it almost looks like it's a hurricane season, right? So we've got a low pressure center down here in the Gulf of Mexico and plenty of ensembles are kind of hinting at a thousand nine ninety eight, kind of a lower end low pressure center just kind of sitting into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, I don't think it's going to form of any tropical entity, but it is kind of, you know, you kind of unique that's we're going to have a low pressure center head into the Gulf of Mexico and you kind of have those same similar dynamics with the kind of the ridge over the top over the U.S. and that helps lower the pressures underneath this will help deepen the low pressure into the Gulf of Mexico by the time we head into next Monday time frame and again it's going to be a slow moving system so we should start to see very heavy rains especially along the coast I-10, I-20 corridor going into Florida should get some very heavy rain with this system. But it's kind of interesting that some of the, some of the, uh, even the uh, ensemble guidance are kind of hinting at these lower pressures down here into the Gulf. And this would likely try to get into the Southeastern portions 
of the Atlantic. And eventually, I think it's going to be heading up the eastern seaboard as we get into the following week. So we're going to be talking about this for an extended time frame because literally we'll probably be tracking this system for about 10 days to come. And there's the system as we go into Monday, right? We'll have a formidable low pressure center into the Gulf of Mexico and right along the coast here. That's where we got to be concerned about some actually some really flooding rains across this region, across Porsche. And this is areas that they desperately needed. They've already had a lot of rains. They've taken taken the exceptional drought out of Louisiana, replaced it with a more extreme drought. And but this will even help it even further with this system kind of stalling there, sitting and spending the Gulf of Mexico, pumping in all that elevated rain. So we could likely see flood warnings across this region as we get into that next Monday timeframe. And this will start moving in to Florida. And I think Florida gets crushed with this low pressure center as it will be slowly moving across, dumping some very healthy rains into that region. And if we look at some of the ensemble guidance and kind of break it down over the next 10 days, notice the drier air that moves in. We got the ridge over the top, right? You got a dry slot that forms on to the right of there. The only game in town is really that low pressure center. But if you're under that low pressure, you're going to get some pretty healthy rains under this system, likely in West Texas, Central Texas, and South Texas. And this will swing into the Gulf and likely impact a good part of the southern flank here of the I-10, I-20 corridor, and then swing up Florida. And then as we head into the following week, this would likely extend up the eastern seaboard as a heavy rain and a heavy wind threat into the following week and the gfs is kind of implying the same way a formidable low pressure center sets up around the four corners regions really starts to elevate around to the texas panhandle getting into the rockies back here in new mexico this swings across texas right along the coastal areas concerned about flooding rains especially into florida and up here and towards the southeast along the coastal regions as this low pressure center will be likely shifting up the eastern seaboard in about seven eight nine ten days from now and there's there's some of the preliminary snow just on the the uh the, the national blend of models right now so obviously where this low pressure center doesn't even form until wednesday but wednesday thursday into friday we could actually get some healthy snows across this region into the into the Rockies down here towards New Mexico, you know, far extreme portions of western Kansas, western Oklahoma, and as well as into the Texas Panhandle. Probably can't roll out far extreme portions of West Texas, likely seeing some light snow by then. So, guys, I appreciate you guys uh, following. Do like this video. Definitely hit the subscribe button. And catch them in the next update. Wire protect you before and after the storm.